What is up guys? Welcome to a new video. I haven't done one of these top fives or best in role videos for a little bit. Normally I just do like them for every role, I guess, like piled into one video. But I think the AD stuff has changed quite a lot recently. Now before we get into this, this is a video with the website Pawn Win. Apparently, according to Fox Show, I'm supposed to call that Pawn Win, but there you go. We can basically play League and earn prizes for doing it, like headsets, games, pay safe cards. The challenges for me are up on the site right now. So you find my name, your ELO, you sign up to earn stuff just for playing in your games like you normally would. As always, when we mention this website, so we're going to give away a pay safe card all you have to do is comment down below like the video if you do as well but just leave a comment and you'll be entered automatically for me to draw it let me know what you guys think of these also the new world song released today and it's kind of weird actually but i want to know what you guys thought of it in the comments today so i can read that so let's start at number five and i'm actually going to put lucian here so remember this is my opinion and this is based on solo queue really like so who would be the best to play if all you cared about was winning games and climbing win rates for him are never going to be that good because he's one of the most popular champions right everybody and their grandmother can play Lucian or at least they think they can. To me I'm kind of sticking him number 5 because if you play him well I think you can do a lot of work with him. A lot of people have been saying he's bad but I don't think that's true. He's still one of the best in lane. He is still very safe, mobile, can play really aggressively. I've been playing him a lot recently and that's how I've been winning with him. If you sit back and do nothing you're kind of wasting that potential I think. Like your passive, your abilities your ultimate, they're all really good at killing people. I don't think like you have to snowball or else. Like he's still going to be good late game but it's just so much better if you do and he's also one of the best if your support sucks like you can do so much work on your own without spoiling the rest of the top five only the number one place here can actually stomp over Lucian early the rest he can duel and do decently well against at least he has like a chance to shut them down you have to work harder to win on this guy than someone like Jinx for example who just right clicks but at least you have like more room to outplay people as well now number four is going to be split in two so one just kind of like the overall fourth spot and another one that would be here for platinum above I think so okay Kaylin is the overall pretty strong at the moment, like still one of the best ADs late game that there is and just because of like her range and her ability to stay safe while doing damage. You can max your traps, you can max your Q, either is good right now. The problem is actually it's kind of like a worse version of Jinx at the moment. Both basically come down to right clicking and kiting people, both are high range, but Jinx just does more AoE damage and her ultimate is a better version in my opinion. A triple crit is definitely the reason she's in the top 5 though, like Runin's Infinity Edge Rapid Fire is 80% crit and you just ruin people in team fires. Remember by the way, it's not just the main target that you're actually going to be hitting and critting, like those runins extra bolts are going to be critting people as well for a lot of damage. You throw in the traps, the high range, the net, and you're super hard to kill while doing loads of damage. Twitch is actually the higher ranked one though, and part of this is just because of where like his power points are and how good your teammates need to be for you to be like fully effective I think. Twitch is OP as balls when you use him properly, but that is like on the Twitch player and his team and that's kind of hard to rely on in ranked. There's basically two parts though. That's kind of how you can sum it up. So the first one, the team fight late game. You have to reach this point where you have like four or five items and pick fights, but your ultimate is insane and it does so much damage with runins and all of those crits. The assassin part is the second thing. It's actually kind of like two little parts thrown together though. So the first part of this is finding people alone and just getting extra gold by winning the 1v1. The other side is actually starting team fights with this like stealth opener right in their face. Your balls have to be pretty big for this and this is also where your teammates are going to come in a bit more, but you stealth in, you pop everything Thing and just nuke like a priority target down to start before anybody can really react. Whether you survive or not is mostly down to if your team follow up or not and that's like the easiest and most overpowered way to win a game. It's so hard to play around but it's kind of hard to pull off at the same time. As we all know as well people in rank tend to run around like morons so it's not really hard to find a group of three to like explode over. That, that she was not a good phrase to use. I Like, okay, I don't think this guy is amazing at lower ranks. He still kind of works, but your lane phase is so poop, you have to kind of survive for a bit, really. So let's go to our bronze medal now. Again, this is one where I actually wanted to put him a bit higher, but like, I think overall for this video, for everyone watching, he's about third. Jin is always going to be insanely good, in my opinion, after adapting to the changes after the nerfs. There were so many things you can still do, like things that I don't think Riot can really actually nerf and fix. Like, I'm talking about ways to win, by the way. We can start with the damage like your trading in lane is really good especially with the fourth crit shot or the Q bounce both are really high damage and hard to return any damage you have a lot of kill pressure with your fourth crit or just with the overall damage you have the follow-up as well for like a support going in you can snare and then you get in range to auto attack and also you have this like retreat trade basically you'll do like a little trade I guess like you'll fight each other then you'll run away you'll start ulting and like firing these shots at them they're already probably half health so you're doing more damage it does more based on their missing health and you're actually going to be able to snipe kills like this really easily so the other side 
side is like the utility. So the snare or like late game, you can rapid fire into snare. Like it's a way to start a fight. Also your ultimate as well to slow when they are split. There's more than enough. The engage is actually so underrated from Jin. Like in my opinion, he is kind of falling into the same bracket as maybe Ash, I think. Like damage and can carry with that damage, but doesn't have to win that way. Your team fight autos and crit like the Kai with the snare, the speed up from Chris as well is really good. But his late game like statistically is not as good as early. Like that is where he is an early game champion. He wins way more games early than he does late. That's just kind of how it is. But his ultimate does damage based on missing health, right? Late game, more armor, so ton less damage from your ultimate with tanks blocking it. It's not really a secret that I love Jin. Like, probably my favorite AD to play at the moment. But I will admit that he is very strong if you just kind of adapt your play style a little. Really, you're looking at your ultimate for this, like the biggest part of it. Like, if you see three of them grouped in front of you, for example, but one bot lane, then just open with your ultimate. Your slow is going to mean your team can chase them down. You do damage if they're like a carry or something at least. Either way, you've just picked a good fight and you're snowballing the game in your favor with zero risk. If you miss, it doesn't matter because you don't even have to get close. Now, originally, I actually had Jin number two, but to be honest, Jinx has to go here. Like, she's so good right now. Her damage is insane. Her ultimate does so much damage now, by the way, off those nurse. Like, I didn't think it was going to make that much of a difference, but it seriously does so much. Runin's with her rockets and Chris is busted. Like, that's where her disgusting team fight is going to come from. And I think really she's just too easy for how rewarding she is. Basically, you just have to right click. Maybe you have to zap. Maybe you chomp if they chase you. Maybe you swap to minigun if they're close. But 90% of the time is rockets, more AOE damage, and higher range to stay safe. There doesn't really seem to be a weak point of her anymore either. Like, before you could kind of bully her in lane, get ahead, put her massively behind. At the moment, when I play Jinx, the only times that has happened to me is where I get ganked and, like, camped big time. Like, 2v2, it's really hard with her range and wave clear. The thing is, there is always a chance she's going to carry anyway when she gets her items. It only takes, like, one team fight to get a passive reset and she off and you're kind of screwed. Like, but again, it is a triple crit stuff. With the rockets, it's even more broken than it is normally. There isn't too much to say, really. She's a perfect AD carry to just pick up and play. She's easy but effective. You just right click and you can win a game. It's easy to take towers with minigun as well, like an early tower first blood if they base at a bad time, which gives you even more gold. Another part of it is just like nobody at lower ranks really knows how to end the game, right? And like no matter what happens early, how boosted you are, how bad you play, like you will eventually get a chance to carry late game if you can just hold on. Okay, so number one, as you probably guessed, is going to be Miss Fortune. Her damage is just crazy at the moment, and I can literally only think of one downside of her, to be honest. Her ultimate is most of her damage, right? If you screw it up in a team fight, then you're kind of done so. And without crowd control on your team, it can be a little bit hard to get a good one off. That is it. That's the only bad thing. In lane, you have your key bounces, which are really hard to play against. Like, even for me, right? And I played AD carry for five years. Normally, you have to watch the enemy CS so you can farm. Miss Fortune, their support, your support as well to see what's going on in the lane. Against Miss Fortune, though, you have to watch your minions as well. Like, something you rarely ever do, so it's weird to get used to. Just because if they get low, you need to run to the side so you don't get smacked by a Q crit. Sometimes, to be honest, you're just going to get zoned from the threat of a Q bounce, and that mage you sucks anyway. Like, your ultimate is crazy damage from far away and hard to dodge if she puts the E down first in the lane phase 2. Also, Dustblade actually applies on her Q, which I think is dumb. Like, people now rush Dustblade, by the way, then Ghostblade, Black Cleaver, so you have insane damage early, and you can keep going on with it later as well. Basically, if you use your double up, like, your Q crit into Dustblade Mark, it's so much damage, it's actually nuts. Like, I've one-shot people with that before in the lane phase. In my opinion, right now, Miss Fortune is the best AD carry for every single elo, low and high. She has a better win rate than Jinx in 619 so far, and she can beat all of the others now too, except maybe Ezreal and Jin actually. Jin can actually kill her like out of range or ultimate with his ultimate or to see like the snipes and stuff, and Ezreal can actually E dodge and just poke her from range, not having to get close to Miss Fortune. Now, I just want to mention Vayne quickly before I end this though, because right now I think Vayne is really good if you're actually good with her. The buffs were really nice, either maxing Q now first or three points into your W or three points into your Q, then max the other. Build wise, you have loads of choice, right? Runins for AoE crits, Shiv IE for burst. Blathering King, Phantom Dance to Jewel People, whatever your style of vein that you actually want to play, you probably have a build to fit it now at least. She does actually get boned in the lane phase quite hard by a lot of meta champs, especially in this top five, but as long as you can kind of hold on, you'll be able to carry. It's kind of hard to put her in a top five when you can't just pick her up and like play her, I guess, but if you're a decent vein, now will be the time to get back into playing her. 
Actually, I really want to talk about Draven before we finish. Like, I know I never mention him in these videos, and that's because, like Vayne, he's only as good as the person playing him. Saying that, though, he is better in 619. Burst and crowd control dying off a little bit in favor for damage, and really, that's good, because, like, Draven's deal is, if I can kill you before you can kill me, then I win. And normally, the answer is yes, he can. I'm not saying he's a like god tier or anything, but his win rate is better in 619, and I do actually think he can destroy any of these champions in the lane phase. If I was ranking these based on like you were good at every single champion who should you play to climb I'd probably put him about third so he is that good at the moment. So that wraps up the video Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of the world song as well I'm actually interested to see what everybody thinks. Thank you for watching though and for now Let's go to the robots